because God chose his ingredients so that he could reveal himself to us through and by this holy anointing oil. So when we talk about the ingredients of this holy anointing oil, each of us who possesses the Holy Spirit, we have these ingredients within us. And they are in us to work in our behalf. Amen. Praise God to cause us to be blessed. In this Old Testament reality, God foreshadowed the divine personality of the Holy Spirit. As well as the redemptive work he came to do. So when we consider this holy anointing oil, praise God, we also are able to see within it as we look closer at it, as we study it, as the Holy Spirit reveals to us and gives us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to understand, we're able to see God and we're able to see and understand the redemptive work of Jesus Christ through and by the Holy anointing all that it was more than something that we just put on our heads and draw a cross up there and when we're feeling bad and need prayer and just anoint one another. There's a whole lot more to it than that. Amen. A close examination of the anointing all will reveal the person of the Holy Spirit to us in type and teach us how he accomplishes his supernatural work in our individual lives mm -hmm. and in the church. Praise God. Amen. So we, as we look closer, as we study closer about, you know, consider closer this holy anointing oil, we're going to understand the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead in a greater way. Amen. He's going to manifest himself to us Amen. in a greater way. He's going to reveal himself to us Glory. in a greater way. Glory. And then we're going to understand his supernatural work in our lives mm -hmm. in a greater way. Don't you need him already in your life in a supernatural way? Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we're going to understand his supernatural work in the church. The church in the body of Christ. Amen, amen, because if he's working in the church, and we are the church, amen. amen, the body of Christ, amen, if he's working in us, whenever the church gathers in the building, uh -huh. we will see his supernatural work on display, uh -huh. even amen. in the building. <laughs> Contents of the compound, is the chapter 30, verses 22 through 25, gives us the information here tells us the ingredients. Amen. What, what God chose after God had created the heavens and the earth. It points out to us the ingredients that God chose to compound this holy anointing oil out of everything that he had created in the earth realm. He chose these Ingredients. Verse 22 reads as follows. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels. He told him how much. And sweet cinnamon had so much, even 250 shekels. And sweet calamus. 250 shekels. And of cassia, 500 shekels. After the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive oil and hen. Praise God. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. An ointment compounded after the art of the apothecary. Apothecary means pharmacist. It shall be a holy anointing oil. So God told Moses what to do. Now, Moses wasn't the one who went and composed or compounded this 
holy anointing oil and all the ingredients, but the apothecary, the pharmacist, gathered it all together. So this is why we say, do all that God puts in your heart to do, because there were those people who knew how to compound this stuff, I mean, who, who God put in their hearts, and even as he told Moses, praise God, he spoke to the apothecary and told them, praise God. This holy anointing oil. That's why I can't go. I wish I could, but I could go and make that holy anointing oil and have possession of it for myself and be able to use it in the local church and anoint the people of God with it. I mean, he didn't tell me to go. I don't even know where to go get this stuff. Amen. <laughs> where to get and get, get all the ingredients. Only thing we know where to go get is the olive oil. And there was only a little bit, only a hint yes. of the olive oil that was added to this mixture. Yes. So God spoke to Moses, praise God, and, and, he, and he told him how this, uh, this uh, holy anointing oil was to be made, praise God. The holy anointing oil was, um, no, it was no haphazard mixture of spices and oil. It was not, it was no haphazard mixture. It, um, he was not supposed to just go and get some uh, myrrh and go get some calamus and go get some olive oil and the other ingredients just missing. No. God told him just how much to get. It's just like when you make a cake. My wife makes a good carrot cake. Praise God. Somebody said, yes, she does. I got some witnesses in here. I can't make it. I have cut up, chopped the carrots up many times. I have chopped the nuts up many times. I have seen her throughout the years, gathered everything together, pull out the recipe book, praise God, go to the store and purchase all the ingredients, set everything out on the countertop, praise God. She knows exactly how to blend it, exactly how to mix it, exactly how much of each each ingredient to put in. And when she makes the cake, it comes out the same way every time. Praise God. This is how this holy anointing all was. Every time the apothecary would gather the ingredients and do it the way God said do it, it will come out the same way every time. Amen. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we say, well, you know, I think I'll add some raisins in it this time. I in a carrot cake. I think I'll add some pineapple in it this time. And a lot of times, we want to add something to God, add something to the things of God, praise God. But no, when God gives divine instructions, he just wants us to obey him and to do only that which he puts in our hearts to do, just like he said do it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead, it was to be compounded as carefully as a pharmacist who prepare medicine. God specified the ingredients and their amounts exactly and instructed the people to never change the recipe throughout all their generations. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, today we like to change everything we can change. Praise God. Amen. And if people were making the unholy anointing oil today, you know they come up with another ingredient, another recipe. They would say, oh, I can make it better than that. Or I, I, I just feel the Lord needed me to do this and the Lord needed me to add this to it. No. Can't add anything to it. Amen. Hallelujah. This unchangeability typifies the fact that the personality of the Holy Spirit does not change. Amen. Even as the holy anointing all and its ingredients never change. Because they typify Christ and they typify God, in other words, He is the same yesterday, Amen. today, yes. and forever. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. The Holy Ghost, He is the same yesterday. 
yesterday, yes. today, yes. and forever. Yes. It doesn't matter what generation is on, on the scene and on the scene at the time, if it's baby boomers or if it's millennials, God is the same. Amen. His word is the same. Is the same. His power is the same. His glory is the same. Praise God. He's the same God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world changes. Everything changes. But he's the same God today. Somebody say, He's the same God. Hallelujah. 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 He is God, and we must learn to know him for who he is yes, yes. in his completion yes. and perfection as a third person of the God he is. Yes. God the Father. Yes. God the Son. Yes. God the Holy Ghost. Yes. The Holy Ghost is the chief executive officer in the earth room. He is the third person of the Godhead and we must get to know him for who he is. He's more than a dance. He's so much more than a shout. He's so much more than preaching. He's so much more than teaching. He's so much more than speaking in our tongues. He is God. Oh, yes he is. Somebody give God he is God. I never will stand in The four spices used to make the holy anointing oil each represent an aspect of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Think about how many times we have read these scriptures in our lives. How many times we read this scripture in Exodus in our Christian journey. We read past it. We read without understanding. And this is why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God and work with who need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Praise God. This is why we must not be afraid to teach it, not be ashamed to teach God's word because it takes teaching to get down in here and discover, break down these ingredients of this holy anointing oil. So that as we consider the ingredients, as we study the ingredients, we can see and understand and get to know our God. The one who's on the inside of us. The one who has given us life. The one who has saved our soul. The one who has forgiven us of our, all of our sins. The one praise God and who anoints us and empowers us to do his will, to do his work, praise God, in this end time hour. The one praise the Lord. Who is the lover of our souls. Hallelujah. Understanding the individual characteristics of each ingredient will give us a beautiful picture of how the Holy Spirit works. But the anointing oil was actually the result of mixing these ingredients yes. to form a compound. Mm -hmm. Gotta have it all. Can't have some of it. Can't choose one ingredient. Can't just choose the article. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yes. By definition, a compound is a distinct substance formed by the chemical union of several ingredients. Yes. This typifies the work of the Holy Spirit as he forms an entirely new creation in us to transform us into the image of Christ. God's larger purpose in ordaining the anointing oil was to reveal these eternal realities of a person and work of the Holy Spirit. This was God's larger purpose. This was his main purpose. This is what he had in mind. Uh -huh. Amen. What the Holy Spirit is doing, he let us know what's on his mind. Yes. Making known to us his thoughts. Yes. 
And thanks be unto God, we are not too late because we sit under the sound of his voice. Praise God. Even at this time, and we hear him speaking. We hear him revealing himself to us. We see him manifesting himself to us. And at this moment, he manifests himself as myrrh. Somebody say myrrh. Myrrh is a short, thorny, ragged, tree shrub that is part of the family of Base balsam, balsam trees, either by a natural process or by a man's cutting the stems. A gummy substance oozes from the shrub like tree. That's murder. The pale yellow liquid gradually solidifies and turns dark green. Or even black. That is myrrh. There were two kinds of myrrh that could be gathered from the same shrub. Pure myrrh. The freely flowing myrrh oozes spontaneously. Hallelujah. Nothing you got to do that calls it. Nothing you got to do to cause the Holy Ghost to manifest itself. Nothing you got to do, praise God, to cause the Holy Ghost to make his presence known. You don't have to pray, 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 and worship, praise, and praise God. Amen. When he just, he just, I'm going to tell you. 
nobody else. But I couldn't keep it to myself. Because of its strong, attractive fragrance, myrrh was a principal ingredient in most costly ornaments. Some scholars say it was a kind of frankincense or musk fragrance. The medicinal value of myrrh made it valuable as an ornament to dissipate the soreness of wounds. Doctors also use it as an antiseptic and in embalming. They made it a fluid by pressing and heating it. That process also releases its strong in the holy anointing oil, its importance as an ingredient is demonstrated by the large quantity prescribed. So, sometimes you feel like you're being pressed. Sometimes you feel like the heat is turned up in your life. That's when all you can do is be still and know that he is called. is getting ready to be finished. Yeah, Even your enemies will sense yeah. his fragrance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Your adversary, your chief adversary, the devil, praise God, he will sense yeah. the presence of God yeah. in you. Yeah. He will sense his fragrance. Yeah. It's strong, yet it's sweet. The root word in Hebrew for myrrh is mara. Somebody say mara. mara. Which means bitter or grievous. Although its fragrance is very desirable, its taste is very bitter. Mara also means to drop on from a container above. Got a container up here, and you just drop, drop, like a drip from a faucet, drop. He don't just pour it all over you at one time. <laughs> Hallelujah. As a dispenser, it is a picture of an atomizer that squirts automatically as our need for it demands. Wherever you need God in your life, wherever you need the Holy Ghost in your life, because if every one of us gets some rain every now and then, every one of us get a storm every now and then, every one of us have a need every now and then, praise God, every one of us need God in our lives and fix the situation to work something out, to work some miracles, to heal them, whatever we may need at the time. Here comes merch. Come to try. Something on the inside. Working. On the outside. A squirt in your spirit. Into your soul. Into your mind. Into your will. Into your emotions. Into your body.
anointing, a spirit of the power, a spirit of his presence, a spirit of his faithfulness. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Here it comes. Very desirable. Mm -hmm. 
God desire. The Holy Ghost, He is desire. I want Him. I want Him. God has. Want Him. You want to be in my life every day. Don't want to be without Him. Even as the fragrance of myrrh was extremely desirable, the fragrance of the Holy Ghost is extremely desirable. You may not want it, but I tell you, neighbors, you may not want it, but I want him. You may not need him, but I got to have him. You may feel like you can do without him, but I'm nothing. I'm just like a ship without a sail. I'm just like a cloud without a rain. I'm just like a fish without a pond. Hallelujah. I'm just like an ocean without salt. I got to have it. I'm just like a body without a spirit. I got to have it. I desire you. I desire him. Above all other things, I desire him. As much as my flesh would long and crave for so many things that the world has to offer, I desire him. As much as Satan would tempt me with things of the world and the pleasures of life and receive, I desire him. I woke up this morning with him on my mind. It was his fragrance that was so sweet. I woke up with a song in my heart to him, giving him glory and giving him praise this morning. I desire him. Never want to be without him. Hallelujah. As the Holy Spirit dispenses the murder grace to us in our difficult situations, he releases its fragrance in our lives. So it's just like when your enemies use somebody and that person works against you and then they come into your presence and then they expect you to have your head hung down and to be mad, angry, upset, or frustrated. And they get total opposite. They get love. They get joy. They get murder. They don't smell the stench of the attitude that you used to have. They smell the fragrance of the Holy Ghost. They don't smell the bitterness and the anger that you once had. They smell the fragrance, the loving, sweet, holy fragrance of the Holy Ghost, and it convicts them, Amen. causing them to say, I am so sorry. Forgive me. Because really they desire that which you have now. Amen. Hallelujah. So even though our experiences are sometimes bitter, the fragrance of Jesus can be released in us when we receive his grace. To walk through them. The fragrance of murder is also characterized in Jesus' life. The psalmist spoke prophetically of Jesus in Psalms 45, verses 7 and 8. It reads, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the all of gladness above thy fellows. All thy garments smell of murder. All your garments smell of murder. Hallelujah. And animals and cats in your praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody should be able to recognize God in you when you walk into the room. Amen. <laughs> All oh, your garments smell of murder. It's talking about murder right there. Yeah. When you walk into the sanctuary, yeah. somebody should be able to tell that you are a child of God and you feel with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 
before the music ever starts, before the song is, songwriter ever starts singing, praise God. Hallelujah, before all people ever start praising God, they should be able to look on you, praise God, and sense the Holy Ghost in you. All your garments, amen, your underclothes, smell like the Holy Ghost. Your shirt, your dress, your pants, smell like the Holy Ghost. Your hair, your hat, smell like the Holy Ghost. Your jewelry, smell like the Holy Ghost. Your shoes, smell like the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. How about that? Hallelujah. Jesus was acquainted with sorrow and grief, but he was anointed with the all of joy as well. Yes. He was acquainted with sorrow and grief, but he was anointed also with the oil of joy. Amen. Praise God. He was despised and rejected of men according to Isaiah 53 verse 3, but the fragrance of his life revealed the Father's love and drew men to follow him. Amen. What is it? That's going to fill up churches all over this world. They got to look on us and see God. They got to look on us and sit in his presence, his fragrance. Amen. What is it that's going to make people want to follow you to the house of God? Praise God. What was it, praise God, that made the man that was laid daily at the gate of the temple called Beautiful, amen, after he was healed in his body, he got up, he began walking, and he was leaping, and he was praising God, and he went with them, Peter and John, the saints, into the temple. He could sense the murder. The Holy Ghost. The third person of the Godhead. He could sense him. Amen. Amen. And he, he, he followed Follow them. Yes. Praise God. Amen. We can't do without God. We can't do without the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. God wants his people to be equipped with the divine ability to rise above sufferings and persecutions and to enjoy the sweet smell of myrrh of grace in their lives. Freely dispensed, it has the power to remove the soreness from wounds that result from consequences of past sin. Freely dispensed, it has the power, praise God, amen, amen, to remove our own sin nature. Freely dispensed, it has the power to remove, praise God, the consequences where we experience mistreatment by other people. So then, we are persecuted. When we are persecuted, we can turn the other cheek as Jesus did. And as he taught us to do. And release the fragrance of meekness and grace in our lives. Our witness is not so dependent upon how we act in life. But upon how we react to life situations. If our reactions reflect grace, murder, God, it is evidence of the Holy Spirit producing the fruit of the tree of life in us and making us Christ-like. Myrrh characterized not only Jesus' life but also his death. When the wise men came to visit baby Jesus, one gift they, pers they presented to him was myrrh. It spoke prophetically of Jesus' sufferings on the cross. Surely there could be no more bitter agony than that which the sinless Christ suffered when he took on the sin of the whole world upon himself. Surely no sweeter fragrance was ever released than that of the salvation for lost mankind part by the sufferings of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. John wrote, and I'm coming to a closing, that Jesus was full of grace and truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Full of grace. Yes. Yes. Full of grace yes. and truth. Yes. When they whipped him, 
murder was manifested. The Holy Ghost was manifested, giving them peace in the midst of the stone. When they draw the nails in his hands and in his feet, grace and truth was manifested. He could still smell the fragrance of his love. When they whipped him, praise God, with those ashes, and the body of flesh came ripping out of his back, praise God, and blood came streaming down. Murder, grace, and truth was flowing freely. When he pressed the crown of thorns on his head, and the blood came streaming down into our Savior's face and into his eyes, grace. And truth yes. smell like the fragrance of myrrh. Yes. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost, he was right there. The grace of God that proved sufficient and the ultimate sacrifice made by the Lamb of God is sufficient for all of our trials as we well. yes. <laughs> It's sufficient. The grace of God is Sufficient. Whatever your trial is, whatever it may be, no matter what it was, no matter what it will be, the grace of God is sufficient. You never know when the trial life is going to come. It doesn't have an age limit on it. It doesn't have to say you be here. You have to be a senior citizen. Praise God. It doesn't say you have to be a man or a black man. Praise God. When the trials of life come, depend on the grace of God. Yeah. Because it is present to help you in your time of need. Yeah. Last verse, Luke 9, 23. He said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Don't be afraid to take up your cross daily. Amen. Don't be afraid to suffer because you have the grace yes. to do so. Amen. You are empowered by the Holy Ghost yes. to do so. You have merit. You have enough merit yes. in you to get you through it. Yes. Jesus furnished us with the grace to carry our cross. We were born again to die to sin in the self-life. We were born again to die to sin in the self-life. Amen? The Holy Spirit shows us the truth about ourselves. And he gives us the grace to take our sin nature to the cross, crucified with the affections and the lust thereof. In time, the bitter but healing oil of murder, freely dispensed, is grace to die to self. You have enough murder within you. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have enough grace within you. You have enough power within you to die. To self. I have enough grace, I have enough mercy, I have enough power within me to die to self will. Amen. 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 As we choose to die to our wills and to our desires, that mercy of grace yields its sweet fragrance in our lives. Somebody can look at you even as they look at a beautiful flower. They may not touch the flower, but just as they walk past it, past it, they sense its fragrance. I don't know what kind of flower it is that my neighbor has, but it's a bush, beautiful dark green leaves. And every year at a certain time, it produces these white flower petals on it. Praise God. Just petals. It looks almost reminds you of the dogwood, but it's not dogwood tree, but it's just a bush. But the fragrance from that bush is there for us to enjoy. Even though it's her bush. Even though 
She takes care of it. She tends to it. It's on her side of the yard. But when the wind blows, the fragrance comes to my door. So that when I get out of my car and I walk, I'm walking into the house, I can enjoy the fragrance of that bush. That's what souls need from the body of Christ. The church that when we walk by, they can enjoy the presence of God in us. That's what the sinner needs that sits on a pew on a Sunday morning. The sons of God to sit there, dead to self, releasing murder. The fragrance, the sweet fragrance of the Holy Spirit, the love of the Holy Spirit, the joy of the Holy Spirit, the peace of the Holy Spirit will bless them. In closing, as I said earlier, I was on Facebook this week and one of the brothers posted or reposted, shared, I should I say, a picture and it had a, a message above it of a lamb Praise God. And it had the shepherd. And the shepherd had a vessel with oil in it. He was pouring the oil on the head of the lamb. It took me back to Psalm 23 when he said, Thou, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So even in the midst of trials, even though we may be walking through the valley of the shadows of death at times, I'm anointed. Amen. With the holy anointing oil. Amen. Peace in the valley. Yes. Sometimes we're not always up on the mountaintop. Amen. But we're in the valley. say how that sometimes the sheep might get caught up in barbed wire, thorns, something that would cause scratches in his eyes, on his head, around his mouth, around his nose, and the flies would land there and plant their eggs, and the eggs would get into the there's sometimes the flowers will plant their eggs in the nostrils of the sheep or the lamb. And it, when the lava would start to come forth, the egg would hatch and the lava would come forth, it would just torment the sheep so much that he would beat his head into a wall. So the shepherd would take an enormous head with oil. And the oil would cover those places. So that the flies could not plant their eggs in them. And the law could not torment the sheep. And the sheep would not die. Thou anointest my head with all. So that demons cannot torment me. So that I don't have to fear what the devil does and what the devil says. Yes, you shall prosper. Shall I be able to prosper? Shall I have the ability to prosper? And every tongue that rise against you in judgment, whether it be Satan, who is the accuser of the brethren, or he uses somebody else, it won't, it won't torment you. It cannot torment you. It cannot get on your nerves. It cannot drive you crazy. It cannot frustrate you. It cannot make you mad because you are anointed with the holy anointing oil. You got the mercy. You got the grace. Will you stand to your foot? Give God a praise offering as you're standing.